Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this regular meeting of the Board of Education for Thursday, May 21st, 2020. This virtual meeting is via Zoom with the audience listening to an audio circuit for those who don't have cable television. Our first order of business tonight is a silent prayer, and Dr. Ruffin, would you lead us in that? Yes, thank you, Commissioner Pagano. And tonight we ask for thoughts and prayers for the following in our moment of silence. In our moment of silence this evening, let us remember former members of the Waterbury Public Schools Education Community who have passed away. Louise Ingala, retired school secretary, who passed away on April 4th. Louise Osella, math teacher and tutor for many years in Waterbury, passed away on April 7th. Jasmine Pena, Senior, senior at Waterbury Arts Magnet School, passed away on April 12th. David Creel, retired science teacher at Wilby High School, passed away on April 14th. Rome Riddick, former substitute teacher, passed away on April 24th. Robert Wise, retired chemistry teacher at Crosby High School, passed away on April 26th. Claire Martin, former substitute teacher, passed away on April 4th. Albano Diaz, former crossing guard, passed away on May 8th. Robert Lachance, bus driver for the Department of Education, passed away on May 12th. Peggy McIntosh, paraprofessional at Crosby High School, passed away on May 19th. Let us remember and recognize the service, dedication, and passion both to our students from Waterbury and those who cared for all of them this evening. Thank you, Dr. Ruffin. Uh, our next order of business is a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Will our student representative, Ashira Scott, do the honors, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag the of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for, for which it stands, one, one nation. nation under God, indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Madam Clerk, would you please do a roll call, please? President, I mean, Commissioner Brown? Here. Vice President Harvey? Here. Commissioner Hernandez? Commissioner Orso? Here. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Here. Commissioner Stango? Commissioner Stango, unmute yourself. He's here. Commissioner He's here. Sweeney? Here. here. Commissioner Jason Van Stone? Present. Commissioner Tom Van Stone? Present. President Pagano. I'm here too. Our first order of business is agenda item number four, communications. May I have a motion to receive and place on file communications as listed, Commissioner Sweeney? So moved. Second. I have a second? Second. All in favor, I mean discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it, thank you very much. Our next order of business is approval of the minutes from the special meeting of April 9th, 2020 and the workshop meeting of May 7th, 2020. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of April 9th, 2020 and the special meeting of the special meeting and the May 7th workshop meeting Commissioner Orso, would you do the honors? I approve the minutes of the, those two meetings. Make a motion. I make a motion we approve those two meetings. Thank you very much. May I have second. a second? Second. Any discussion? Opposition? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. It is now, uh, we're on item six, public address is the board. All speakers are encouraged to submit written, prepared written statements to the commissioners. 
Comments shall be limited to a maximum of five minutes. There will be no responses this evening to any questions or concerns raised. They will be referred to the administration for review and response. May I have a motion to suspend the regular order of business to hear from the public? Jason Van Stone, Commissioner, could you do that honor? Uh, so moved, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We move on with public speaking. Let's see, let's see the screen. Uh, could you state your full name and your address, please, for the record? Yes. My name is Denise Ginelli. My address is 108 New Haven Avenue, Waterbury, Connecticut, 06708. Thank you very much, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening to all present. Before I begin to address my concerns to the Waterbury Board of Education, and the administration, I would like to state that I speak as a parent of a current fourth grader at Rotella Magnet School in Waterbury. The Board of Education Equity Policy states, the inclusion of all students and families supports district goals to increase student engagement and academic performance, and that families are partners with the district in a collaborative effort to address achievement and opportunity gaps. The achievement gap issue is closely related to the concept of equity, fairness in education, equal access to learning opportunities, and greater equality in educational achievement, attainment, and benefits. The term achievement gap refers to any significant and persistent disparity in academic performance or educational attainment between different groups of students as for example, between white students and minorities or between students from higher income and lower income households. Unquestionably, there is a need to measure academic growth in our country. Schools and districts should be held to standards that demonstrate student learning where no factor of identity determines outcomes. Yet, we know that empowering children to achieve academically is the responsibility of adults. The gap has more to do with opportunity than achievement. Opportunity gap implies that when given the resources and opportunities they deserve, all kids can achieve. Most importantly, it does not place responsibility on kids for systemic injustices. Opportunity gap refers to the fact that the arbitrary circumstances into which people are born, such as their race, ethnicity, zip code, and socioeconomic status determine their opportunities in life rather than all people having the chance to achieve to the best of their potential. Closing the gap is more about supporting and challenging students on a personal level than forcing a stringent systemic approach. In other words, it's about enrichment and fueling the desire to learn. We can build on children's strengths by supporting them and challenging them to excel. Children learn when they have opportunities to learn. When denied those opportunities, they fall behind and we get the devastating achievement gaps. When students are provided with rich opportunities to learn, they thrive and the achievement gaps close. I believe that the district is improving outcomes for children and leveling the playing field between families of different circumstances in various ways. Meals are provided daily with breakfast, snack, and lunch. Even dinner is provided on a first-come, first-served basis. The majority of Waterbury students have been loaned Chromebooks. Students are also provided packets bi-weekly. The district is offering authentic learning environments that support the development of non-traditional educational outcomes. During the special Board of Education meeting on April 9th, it was mentioned that the grading policy had yet to be addressed, but that administration was going to look at options such as pass with distinction or pass and complete based on student learning. Then at the May 7th Board of Education workshop, 
we learned that the district decided on a fair grading policy of pass and complete. Loosely defined, a student is considered passing by demonstrating some type of mastery on the topic presented while taking into consideration their unique situation. My concern is with the do no harm mentality, which assumes that our students don't have the ability to become high achievers. Solutions should have been solicited and considered from every sector, not just administration. Was the pass plus, pass, and pass and incomplete grading metric given consideration? If so, what were the arguments against its adoption? What would be the harm in giving students a distinction in passing? We should be encouraging students who exhibit extra dedication, commitment, and hard work through recognition of their effort, as opposed to those students who just log into Google Classroom, do their work, and demonstrate a minimal level of learning. Currently, no distinction is made between students who are fully engaged versus somewhat engaged, respectively. This deprives motivated students of the recognition and accolades they rightfully deserve. Therefore, the do no harm mantra backfires, causing more harm than good. It is my sincere hope that my comments here this evening will incite the administration to review and revise the proposed grading policy for the Waterbury Public Schools in a manner that will encourage and support students' engagement and improved academic performance. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for speaking. Um, may I have a motion to return to regular order of business? Commissioner Jason Van Stone. So move, Mr. President. And may I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Close. The ayes have it. We are back in regular session. Superintendent's announcements is the next agenda item. Thank you, Commissioner. I will uh, start in my announcements by, first of all, um, sharing with you that there are several announcements and there's several comments to be made tonight and uh, several members of my staff will be joining me. Uh, I would like to review with you the order that that will uh, take place uh, so that there's some advance notice about the topics that we will touch on. Want to be able to respond to them, but there's a lot of information that we will be sharing with the board uh, this evening. I, I first want to start off by uh, welcoming Mr. Mendoza, who is on the board meeting tonight as our interim director of human capital. And of course, Mr. Romano, Lisa Romano, who is also our, uh, our teacher of the year for last year, uh, who is now going to be serving as an interim supervisor for talent management and professional development. And to congratulate Ms. Tomasella, who is now going to be the interim principal at Reed School. So I'd like to welcome them and, and thank them for being here or online or in some form present this evening and assuming uh, the roles of leadership within our district. Um, I will give an overview, uh, which will pertain to the end of school, graduation, uh, plans, award ceremonies, to be followed by Dr. Rodriguez, our deputy, who will uh, provide the beginning conversation on distance learning in the district, followed by Mr. Schwartz, our chief academic officer, will give an overview of the teacher's engagement and distance learning video that has been, uh, will be shared with you tonight so you can get an actual glimpse of what's happening inside Google Classroom and video conferencing. Uh, following that, Mr. Clark is going to give an overview on the computer distribution and the process whereby students can continue to receive computers, um, as well as any retrieval um, rules that we have now considered for moving forward as we aim to uh, end this school year officially, but move into the next. Ms. Wyckoff, our Director of Communications, is going to give an overview on our communications and advertising efforts. Ms. Viola will give an overview on the CARES Act and the funding that will be coming to our district. And Dr. Epperson and Mrs. Buckley, Assistant Superintendents, will give you an overview of how the schools are doing, the frequency of our meetings, and what are some of the topics that are on the, on the immediate um, decision-making with schools. 
uh, followed by my ending the presentation and talking with the board members about the Waterbury Public Schools Long-Term Recovery Committee and our subcommittees, uh, which uh, and our long-term committees are held uh, side by side with the Mayor's Committee on Long-Term and Short-Term Recovery of the City. So it's rather lengthy. We're going to try to be very brief uh, and allow many opportunities and time for questions about what cannot possibly be done in a short period of time, or we're going to be very short and succinct. I asked my uh, my staff uh, to please, as soon as the overview is given by one colleague, that the other immediately starts so that we don't have a lot of in-between time other than perhaps questions that the board members may have. If that's okay with you, I would like to proceed. Please proceed. Um, we have uh, been receiving guidance uh, from the Commissioner of Education, uh, Dr. Cardona, as well as listening to and receiving uh, updates from the governor and also listening to our rec centers and listening to a lot of research uh, that has been ongoing for the last several weeks. And in addition to that, we also have a, a command station here in Waterbury. We're very attuned to what's happening in terms of safety and safety precautions and protocols, updates from what's happening in our Waterbury hospitals, as well as what's going on with the number of COVID-19 uh, cases in the state of Connecticut and more specifically directly uh, in, in our community. Uh, we've taken a lot of considerations uh, on these fronts as we make decisions for the safety of everyone. Um, and as a result of that, we've had several meetings. I have had two meetings with students, seniors that were invited by their school principals participating in discussion on um, uh, award ceremonies for, for their graduating class as well as graduation. And uh, principals have had more meetings than that. And then we've met continuously with the principals to determine some of the next steps that are going to be taking place in Waterbury. Uh, very specifically, uh, graduation was a very important priority for all of us uh, and wanted to make the very best decision for the students to have a celebration that would recognize their hard work as well as give them the opportunity to really celebrate with their families, being aware that we are in a pandemic and that the celebration would look different than the celebrations that they were accustomed to and their parents may have been accustomed to in the past. So having conversations with um, uh, a, a vendor that could provide a, a state-of-the-art presentation on, on the graduates, recognizing each school individually, and making certain that students were going to have um, that virtual celebration, although that's not primarily what they would have chosen first, but given the safety and uh, we have moved forward with identifying graduation dates for the senior class of 2020. And those graduation classes, uh, those graduation ceremonies will be conducted virtually. Uh, our principals have sent links to the students to upload photos, the student valedictorian, as well as salutatorian, as well as other speakers identified with the school will have an opportunity to create uh, a, a, and present their speeches in a virtual environment that will be pre-recorded, as well as having the virtual presentation of every senior that will be graduating in 2020 for each respective schools in their school colors uh, to be presented on uh, June 16th and June 17th, respectively. Um, given the, uh, the governor's last executive order and given the guidance that was received from the commissioner, uh, we have taken matters very seriously to determine the very best opportunity for our students to guarantee a graduation requirement and graduation ceremony, uh, not knowing what will happen as a result of some parts of the state opening uh, uh, yesterday and not knowing what the full repercussions are going to be in two weeks or a month from now, we wanted to guarantee that the class of 2020 would have a ceremony. And the virtual ceremony at this time is guaranteed. Um, so that is what is going to be occurring in terms of the graduation for the class of 2020. 
award ceremonies. That was also important to the seniors that has been worked on with the individual high schools to present an, an award ceremony to celebrating the class of 2020, again, in a virtual environment. We are still working on the end of school procedures for all of our students. Uh, some of our middle schools are working on some celebrations, again, virtual for our middle school students, as well as we anticipate that we're going to have some celebrations for our elementary schools. And uh, we've noticed a lot of activity on the social media where schools have already been celebrating their students. And we expect to see even more of that as we move forward to celebrate the end of school year. Uh, I will speak more about the end of school year as the progress evolves. And I will also speak very, um, very much to that when I talk about the, uh, uh, the committees that have been formed to address the long-term plans for, for reopening the, the school district at the end of this presentation. And uh, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Rodriguez at this time. Thank you, Dr. Ruffin. Uh, commissioners, Mr. President Pagano, Vice President Harvey, uh, tonight I'd like to share with you uh, an update on <clears throat> implementation of Google Classroom and Google Meet uh, and levels of engagement for students. Um, if you have not had an opportunity, I would strongly recommend uh, in your at-home uh, time to review the distance learning resources that are on the Waterbury uh, webpage and particularly um, the distance learning teacher resource page. And that, that requires you to be logged into your browser using your Waterbury email address. Um, and the reason I say that is because uh, as I peruse uh, several websites across the nation and, and uh, Connecticut, I do note that there are distance learning plans posted uh, and most of the time those are in the form of a PDF or uh, one or two web pages. If you take a look at the Waterbury uh, resources that have been provided for both um, teachers and families, uh, there is a robust set of uh, online tutorials that have been created by the academic office, as well as um, some department plans for each department uh, content area in the district. So uh, just because it doesn't appear in a, in a PDF document doesn't mean it's not there. Uh, it, it is just, it, there is so much information that it is overwhelming uh, and, and it does allow every user to tailor their experience as they go into the website. So uh, if you get an opportunity, please review those resources. I highly recommend it. They're, they're thorough, they're substantial resources and I couldn't possibly cover all of that information tonight. Uh, but I do uh, wanna remind uh, as we heard uh, tonight that uh, students are still receiving packets on a bi-weekly basis if they do not have access to Google Classroom or a uh, Google Chromebook device. Uh, that is an option that we still provide as a district along with the, the meals, uh, but per, uh, a big majority of our students uh, now have access to a device as well as Google Classroom. And then uh, we are very excited that we have uh, enabled uh, Google Meet. Uh, Google Meet was something that we I uh, wanted to ensure uh, students were in, in a safe environment and that they could be moderated by the teacher. And it was until recently that Google provided uh, that those meets would be conducted by teachers and not specifically student to student, but more uh, teacher uh, in, in, the, in the world of trying to provide uh, virtual office hours, virtual instruction, virtual um, social emotional learning supports and uh, small group uh, uh, interventions with students. So uh, that Google Meet last week, and um, just some, I wanna read a whole bunch of numbers to you, and if you need me to provide these, I can, but uh, specifically, we have now in the district 4,204 Google Classrooms. Um, an example of what uh, a high usage date would look like, um, on May 18th, for example, we had 14,709 posts by teachers into Google Classrooms. That means teachers updating students with information in their stream. Um, and we also, as of May 8th, uh, checked in with principals, our assistant superintendents, Dr. Epperson and Mrs. Buckley, uh, asked principals to monitor by grade level and by teacher um, those student connections, uh, in, in other words, 
which students were connected in a Google Classroom with the teacher. Um, they gathered that data through the um, IDTs or the data team meetings with those uh, specific grade level teachers. And we were able to capture that data for every campus uh, in the district. So just to give you an idea of what that looks like, um, WAMS Middle School, for example, uh, has a hundred reports, a hundred percent of their students um, having some type of Google Classroom login with their teacher. Um, and that will vary. Um, and, and closely behind that are campuses with 99%, 96%. But I want to give you um, the range. So the range is anywhere from 100% to our uh, Bucks Hill Annex at 56%. Uh, we understand that uh, early on pre-K students were not um, included in the in the first distribution, but uh, that was remedied quickly. And I, I believe uh, right right among the second day, uh, we started providing those devices, but for some reason, uh, we don't uh, have as many pre-K families logged in, but we are proactively uh, making sure that that happens. So the district average, if, if we were to take the range from 100 to 64, uh, on an average, we have 86% of students who have uh, logged into and had an interaction in a Google Classroom. And so the medium for that would be 88%. So we're looking at uh, between 86 and 88 percent of all of our students in the district having some type of connection in a Google Classroom with a teacher. Now, uh, Google Meet being very new to the district, um, I want to give you the process kind of that we went over. Uh, we met with what we identified as super users for uh, Google Suite, and those were self-identified teachers throughout the district who said that they felt comfortable and confident in delivering uh, instruction on the Google platform. We use them as uh, one, a, a way to gain input on the deployment of Google Meet, but secondly, uh, to provide them the initial um, deployment plan so that they could give us feedback and then uh, we could roll that out. So we met with approximately 85 teachers um, and had that, that feedback session as well as professional learning to describe how Google Meet would work in the district. Uh, the following uh, day, we met with uh, all school principals, assistant principals, and vice principals. And in that meeting, we described um, how that Google Meet would roll out for the district. Um, within a very, very short uh, time period from when Google made the, the option available and to when we deployed it, the academic office also worked to create learning materials for teachers as well as uh, student guides and parent information on how Google Meet is going to be used. That was again uh, created in a very, very short time frame. Um, there is a district, uh, as part of that information, they provided a district-wide plan for how teachers and students would interact on the platform. Uh, they created uh, guidance on how to prepare teachers for their first Google Meet, uh, gave them uh, practical applications such as how do you mute students, how do you remove students from a Google Meet uh, if, if the need arises, and then uh, created a video conferencing guide for students. Uh, and all that is to say that after that um, training was provided to teachers online, they would then acknowledge that they viewed the orientation, they knew, um, to use the cliche, the rules of the road uh, to participate in that meeting, uh, in the Google Meets. Um, and then as of May 15th, um, uh, we, we have been able to record from May 15th through today, May 21st at 3 p.m., that there have been 22,880 Google Meet interactions with students. So 22,880 student interactions with teachers uh, from May 15th through May 21st. Uh, we have also over 1,337 teachers who have gone through the orientation module and have acknowledged that they understand how to, how to use Google Meet and how to engage students. Now, we also uh, provide supervisors have office hours daily where they can provide teachers with support. And we know that um, principals have been working closely to develop schedules where um, students would be able to interact with teachers on those Google Meets. So that's Google Classroom and Google Meet uh, and some data to share with you on that. I wanna uh, remind uh, us that the last time we met, we talked about digital resources. Uh, specifically study sync uh, waterbury is leading the nation in the usage of study sync and when i say study sync i i, I don't want to assume that we all know what that is uh, so just briefly i will mention that 
Uh, StudySync is a reading and writing program uh, deployed at our middle school level grades where it takes the contemporary and the classic literature. It, it, it's a rigorous program. Uh, we, if you look at our results at the middle school, uh, our Smarter Balance assessment for last year, after one year of implementation, we saw double digit. A robust uh, resource and we're glad that our students are using it. Uh, it also has built-in supports for um, English language learners and uh, it gives students <clears throat> the, the supports uh, to access uh, through explicit vocabulary instruction, gives them the language acquisition supports, and then it also gives them the reading comprehension that, that they need to be successful. And so that, that study sync, we, we continue to monitor that. We're excited that students continue to use it because we've seen results from that resource implementation. Uh, just as, as early as this morning or as recent as this morning, we also at the elementary and middle school levels, K-8, um, have uh, some iReady data to report. And uh, again, no, not to assume that everybody knows what iReady is, but iReady is that online resource that uh, motivates students on their particularly uh, particular personalized pathway. Uh, it, it focuses on both grade level instruction as well as making sure that students have growth in, in uh, their uh, academic areas of mathematics and reading. Um, they are placed on those pathways based on a diagnostic that they take. Uh, that diagnostic then um, will allow them to work at their own pace as well as stretch them by providing them with grade level instruction. Um, so just some data uh, on that. Um, one great great thing that we saw in the data is that uh, the number of students that were actually using the iReady product closely mirrored the enrollment of the school uh, back at that 88 uh, median percent that, that I talked about. Uh, that's also uh, around the percent of students that are participating in the math iReady and in the reading iReady instruction. Uh, and we're also able to monitor the number of lessons that students can pass per week. Uh, so just some, some highlights here. So for example, at Tinker Elementary, 84% uh, of students passed their math lessons last week, 78% passed their reading lessons with students participating in math at 486 students and 462 students participating in reading. And we have that broken out uh, by campus and that's just the first one on the list, BW uh, Tinker. Uh, and I won't read all of this data to you, but this data is available. Uh, I, the most, um, I guess, uh, important piece of data to report is that we have many students using these. Uh, and then we also have what we call the time on task. And if we look at the average time on task for, for students, they are participating in math. Uh, from 108 minutes uh, per week in, in math and 99 minutes in reading. Uh, so we're seeing pretty high levels of usage uh, from iReady as well, which means that uh, we have students being supported in Google Classroom, but also being supported with digital resources like StudySeek and iReady. So that's that's some great news to share with you and to report. Um, I, I do also uh, wanna highlight that uh, we had uh, um, some fine arts um, presentations that were delivered to the Department of Ed. And then uh, we have uh, also seen some uh, videos uploaded for, from the PE world for uh, students who are doing PE uh, activities at home. So this, this is more than just math and reading, but it's engaging students uh, to the greatest extent possible during this closure. Uh, we also uh, know that we're trying to monitor engagement for students and that that is a at this time uh, reported by teachers because we do still have students that are uh, engaged through packets as well as students who are uh, participating in the numbers that I just read uh, to you from Google Classroom and Google Meet. So we're excited that, they, uh, that we are at this point in the year and that engagement uh, is at the point that it is uh, with the numbers of students you know, to have 22,880 student interactions uh, with teachers in, through video conferencing just in, in less than uh, seven days is pretty phenomenal and we expect that that will continue. Uh, with that, I will uh, stop my presentation and um, I don't know if we wanna ask questions now or wait until uh, the rest of the presentations are done. Dr. Ruffin, do you wanna take questions now or do you wanna wait until the end? 
actually, Mr. Schwartz's uh, presentation and actually uh, give you a visual into what our teachers and our students are saying. I think that's important for you to hear first. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. And uh, I had some data to share, but Dr. Rodriguez, you 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 covered everything. So uh, thank you for that. In fact, it, while he was speaking, we had four more teachers um, uh, sign off on they attended the PD online that we we provided, and so now we're up to 1,341 teachers that are that are on Google Meets and, and ready to go. So um, it's real time, real time data. We monitor on a consistent basis. I have a a video that uh, we were able to put together um, uh, with the help of some phenomenal teachers starting uh, Monday. As you know, Google Meets uh, was up and running and uh, some teachers were willing to, to talk about it. And uh, we had some sign-offs on, on some students who are willing to come on and talk about it. So I'd like to play a short video for you now uh, to see what that looks like uh, from a teacher or student perspective. Uh, for the board. And so uh, I'm going to cue, cue Dave because he has the video and if he can't do it, I've got a way to do it. Hello, board members. My name is Paul Singley. I teach at Wilby High School. I teach English and journalism. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to be able to use Google Meets to interact with our students and just being able to check in on their well-being and see them has been great for them and also good for me uh, as a teacher because I obviously miss them tremendously. I have 110 students right now and um, I'm able to see a majority of them. So uh, it's been great. So thank you for that opportunity. The best part about being a teacher is building relationships with students that lead to positive outcomes. The implementation of Google Meets this week has given me the opportunity to have that face-to-face, one-to-one connection that I've been missing. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hi, Joseph. Hi. Okay. Good morning, guys. Hi. You can hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Awesome sauce. Okay. I'm my teacher because that's how I can see her and I miss her so I can do work and video chat. This is so great, my friends. I'm so happy to see your faces. So beautiful. Okay. This week, 24 out of 24 of my students were able to connect with me via whole group, small group, or a one-to-one -one setting. During these times, I'm able to make connections on a personal level and also provide specific feedback. Does anyone know why we call them trick words? Does anyone remember what Ms. G would say? Dylan? All right, I'm going to unmute you, Dylan. Okay? So you can talk. Hold on. Give me one second, Dill. I got you, buddy. All right, Dylan, tell me. Why, are, why do we call them trick words? Because... Um, they're tricky. They're tricky? Why are they tricky? Um, they change kind of like the sounds. Yeah, they don't follow the rules. Remember our foundation's rules, my friends? You guys are being such great listeners. So I don't know if you saw, and you can shake your heads because I can see you all. Um, on Google Classroom, I put up a read aloud called Flat Stanley. Did you guys see that? Okay, some of you did, some of you didn't. If you didn't, it's okay, it's there all week. It's under bedtime or anytime stories with mystery. Let me see if I can let me see if I could find it and show you. What about right now? What do you see? Oh, uh, we see Google classroom. classroom. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna show you where you can find Flat Stanley, okay? Um, okay. So uh, you can see where I am on T. Right. Everybody, let's do our fingers. Ready? Sky right. Let's see, Hector. I want to see those fingers. <laughs> R I G H T. Awesome Hi. sauce. Hi there, I'm Jill Goodman from Kennedy. I teach 11th and 10th grade English and I am super excited to be able to use Google Meets with my kids. I'm gonna be able to connect with so many of them. So many of them need that feeling of being in the classroom and face-to-face -face with their teachers. I started videotaping lessons and putting them up and the kids said, miss, we miss your curtains. 
So they, they miss that personality of their teachers that go with the lessons that we teach them. So I'm super excited to be able to provide that for them. I'd like to thank the district uh, for providing um, technology for students that would not have been able uh, to access this technology on their own at home. Seeing their smiles and hearing their laughs um, is the absolute best part of my day, hands down. I like to video chat because I can see my friends and classmates and I can at least talk to them because I'm not in school. Okay. I want to see Juani over. You, you want to see Juani? Juani is not home right now. I sent him to his grandma's house. Oh. <laughs> he was going to bark too loud. Yeah. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye. Hey, didn't want to say bye to everybody? Bye. bye. Okay. okay. Bye, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye. And now you've heard the importance of the platform Google Meets and how important it is to keep those connections and building those relationships with our students. And I think they might miss us almost just as much as we miss them. I like the video chat with Miss Kirschberger because I get to see her and my friends again. Awesome. Okay, so uh, as you can see, very, very excited teachers, students. Um, I think Dr. Rodriguez's uh, uh, data said it all, but you can see the personal touch that's being made. Um, just really excited. And I, I want to take a, a second to publicly thank uh, John O'Toole, Lisa Romano, Allison Kirschberger, Ashley Felez, uh, Mallory uh, Kern Brito, uh, Daniel Marcano, Megan Drury, Paul Singlian, Jillian Goodman for helping uh, uh, assist us in, in a very short amount of time. And uh, if I, they have so much video that I had to cut it down to five and that was really hard to do. Um, and so some of their clips didn't make it in, but I, I could tell you that there were just a few teachers that were, uh, that were selected, but there were many more that, that were willing and uh, able to add on. And so um, um, excited students out there right now and excited teachers. So. Uh, just excited to move on myself to, 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 to see this development in our distance learning program. And, um, um, and that's, that's all I have, doctor. Thank you. We have uh, Ms. Wyckoff. Shajatha, are you on? I know she was on here. Can you all hear me now? Yes. 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 All right. Um, well, good evening, commissioners. I, I hope that uh, you and your families are well um, during this uh, very difficult time. Um, I think uh, with everything that we've been going through, there's never been more of a need of a uh, very thorough uh, communications, transparent, and uh, sincere and compassionate. I think all of those go hand in hand um, when reaching our families. And during this time, um, especially, we have been very meaningful in what we have been putting out there and we have been communicating often and with purpose. Um, and we've been doing that through a variety of ways, um, but namely our website, uh, social media, and just last week, we started a weekly newsletter um, that's being sent to the schools uh, to distribute and also uh, being posted. Um, and the purpose of that newsletter is to really aggregate and collate the volume of information that we're receiving. Um, Dr. Ruffin uh, suggested this for our parents and families, and it really uh, seems to be well received given parents are being inundated with so much as well. Uh, so this helps us prioritize what we feel they need to know week by week while keeping them updated with all of the guidance that we are receiving. Um, as Dr. Rodriguez mentioned, uh, the distance learning website has been wonderful and we have linked that to our district website. And I am currently working on a similar Google site to put all of the information related 
to the pandemic and education in one place. Um, and I'm hoping to have that ready uh, by June 1st. Um, but I think that's really going to help parents just a one-stop shop um, to find what they need, especially as we head into summer school and what that may look like. And of course, um, the fall. And it's going to be very important for us to clearly communicate that information uh, in a timely manner, as well as uh, in multiple languages. Um, so I can tell you, you know, these last couple of months, uh, working with the cabinet and administrators and teachers, um, we've really made an effort to write everything with a great amount of care to ensure that accurate information uh, is reaching our families. Um, it may take a little longer than we like, and we are working uh, to get things out in a timely manner, but, um, but it is important uh, to me, and I know, again, to, to the cabinet, to make sure everything we're sharing is factual and that we're not uh, adding to the anxiety, um, but helping to reduce it with good information. Um, some exciting news that we have to share is that uh, when I was brought on board, um, one of the goals I know the district had was to amplify our message um, through uh, television, um, as many of our counterparts do in some of the larger districts. So we will be working with Channel 3 um, to salute our seniors. Uh, we thought if there was ever a time to begin uh, that partnership um, with a new station, it is now. And uh, we just solidified that this will go forward and um, we will be airing a 30 second spot um, between June 8th and June 24th and it will run 24 times. And uh, we are just beginning to work on the messaging, um, but that came together in the last couple of days and all of our five high school principals uh, will be featured in that. Um, and uh, that's going to be a really big step, I think, for the district in uh, opening that world of communication up um, to elevate us even more. So that, that is what I had prepared. Um, and I just want to end with uh, any suggestions on what, you know, I can do better personally, what we can do better as a team uh, to communicate uh, our welcome. And I, I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank you, Ms. Biela. Thank you, Dr. Ruffin. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Um, I just want to give you an update, a quick update on the funding that um, we are going to be receiving. We were notified last week from uh, Commissioner Cardona's office um, that through the Federal CARES Act, the Elementary and Secondary School Education Relief Fund, that Waterbury will be awarded close to $9.4 million. Um, these funds are, are here to support our district uh, in a recovery plan. Um, to provide education in a way that is accessible, equitable, equitable and meaningful. Um, the state has suggested uh, four priorities uh, to consider when we are developing this recovery plan. Um, and those priorities are one, to ensure that all our students have access to appropriate technology and connectivity. Two, accessibility to high quality curriculum that addresses the needs of all of our learners, including students with disabilities. Three, to address student learning gaps and safely reopening of schools. And four, to provide social and emotional support for educators and students as they transition back to school. Um, we are expected to receive our application uh, sometime next week. Um, and when we have completed the application and um, send it off onto the state, they had promised that it should be a quick uh, turnaround time for us to receive the funds. And that's all I have right now for that update. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Viola. I skipped, a Mr. Clark, are you there? I am Dr. Ruffin. Um, so just quickly to give a, an update, um, it was great to see the uh, technology in action, but as to the technology, um, we, much like the other work that was discussed, there was a, a really quick turnaround and essentially an all hands on deck approach uh, to get the devices out to students. Thankfully, with the work the technology group led by Mr. Zuda 
uh, has done over the last few years and are putting together the technology plan, updating the technology plan and, and presenting that annual plan to the board. Uh, we had a very good sense of the inventory and the type of devices we're using and, and why and how, uh, and we're able to then uh, put our hands on those devices and work with the schools to do a quick survey. Um, and thanks to the, the teachers for and the principals for engaging directly with uh, parents and students uh, on that. And then uh, working with our partners in the fire department, police department, and our facilities team, uh, putting together safe and appropriate um, sites to distribute uh, the computers. Uh, to date, we have distributed out into the field um, almost 8,000 computers, 7,838 at this time. And it's important to note through our survey uh, that uh, 30% of our um, um, student population indicated that they have a device at home and will be able to connect uh, through the internet uh, with their personal devices. So if you put those two numbers together, um, that's uh, a little more than 70% of our population through the devices we've given them or through their own identification of uh, their devices and internet uh, ability at home. Uh, that could connect. And I think that is uh, what's shown in some of the statistics um, that Dr. Rodriguez went through and some of the uh, real uh, uh, life uh, demonstration that uh, Mr. Schwartz went through uh, that these kids are connecting. And I think it's important to see and note um, that the kids uh, seem better than we are unmooting and uh, engaging with the technology um, in, in some respects. And, and that is uh, an indication of the uh, the choices made with the technology and the connection uh, that we're always seeking to improve, but the connection that exists between our facilities and technology groups and uh, and the curriculum group um, to get uh, these things in the right hand and, and, and hands and functioning. Uh, at this time, we're still accommodating and working with the schools um, for any student who needs uh, a device, thanks to some commissioners for helping us uh, connect with folks who uh, for whatever reason, we did not reach through the various means uh, we were utilizing. Um, we have, at this time, another um, uh, 1,400 devices on hand, um, and that is a combination of devices that we, uh, through our inventory, uh, have at various schools, and we've centralized that so we can do a quick turnaround and push out those devices as needed. And we've been purchasing devices with uh, money that's been available through grants and um, uh, other available resources. Um, so that's another 1440 that uh, currently, as I sit here tonight, are available. And we've ordered a number of other devices through some grants uh, that should be coming in in the next um, few days and weeks that will add to that total as we continue to work through the Technology Committee and Dr. Ruffin to uh, move more towards that one-to-one -one, uh, reality that, that we want to get to. Um, and we'll have that those state computers and laptops coming in uh, over the next few months as well, over 4,000 um, that uh, will be put into our, our inventory. Uh, many hands make light work. Uh, again, I uh, want to thank the principals, the teachers for making all those personal contacts, our parent liaisons, paraprofessionals who helped in that regard. Um, uh, as well, folks at our Welcome Center and so forth, but um, most kudos uh, to the uh, technology group, again, led by Mr. Zuda and his team, who was uh, at every location doing the distribution, finding the devices, making sure they were in working order, um, and helping us, and also uh, Tara Battistoni, uh, who worked with us on the data and the sharing of the sheets and the updating of that uh, as much as in real time as we could. Um, to make sure we're getting this, these devices out, we know who has them. At this time, as we begin our end of year work, uh, we are working with the schools to um, uh, work with our seniors and any students who know that they might be leaving the district, uh, either to attend another school or, or through whatever other movement you know, that may be happening. And we'll be seeking to get those devices back uh, as the year ends. Um, that those devices then could be redeployed um, uh, over the summer or next year uh, to other students. Um, we need to build a, the sustainability of this program and this project um, 
um, both for the one-to-one aspects, uh, but also for the ultimate uh, return back to school in some por- uh, some portion. Uh, so we have to build up some of our infrastructure. Uh, that's some of the information you've heard about before in our capital planning and our annual plans that we've put forth. We're basically uh, enhancing those, updating those, uh, leveraging grant dollars and uh, maybe some of this CARES Act money uh, to put ourselves in that position to um, uh, be ready uh, when the kids return uh, and also to continue to support uh, the distance learning efforts. Um, the last point I'll make is that we've also distributed uh, a few hundred computers to staff uh, who have needed uh, the device for connectivity and uh, to do the work that they need to do with their students. So that's another aspect uh, that we continue to monitor. Uh, we we'll use our um, help ticket um, work order system uh, to address any needs that staff are having uh, to support them with training uh, and if necessary, a device to make sure that they are connecting uh, with the students and, and performing um, the, the work uh, uh, as much as they can in this distance environment. So with that, I'll, I'll conclude and be happy to take questions uh, when appropriate. Thank you. Miss um, Buckley and Dr. Epperson, could you? Good evening, commissioners. Um, Dr. Epperson and I uh, continue to meet every week with the cabinet members and we meet with Dr. Rodriguez and Darren Schwartz, the chief academic officer to plan for continuous teaching and learning and assist in all efforts of implementing that process. From the beginning of uh, March 12th, as you know, our entire world was upside down. And in the beginning we were focusing on distributing and assisting with the logistics of food and learning packets. And then one week after another, then we started with the Chromebooks and planning for that distribution. As you know, we began with the high school and middle school and the elementary distribution ended on May 8th, but students are continuously aware if they need a device, they contact the school. Each and every day, I am in contact with the, um, all of the principals that I work with, they text me each and every day how many students have come to the school to collect meals and learning packets. And that being said, now that all the Chromebooks have been distributed, the, we did develop the spreadsheet that Dr. Rodriguez referred to, the percentage of students that are logging on to Google Classroom. We also monitor with the student engagement aspect during IDTs, Administrators meet with their teachers and they go by teacher by teacher, student by student, students who are engaged, somewhat engaged or not engaged. And we track those students in assistance with Jackie Davis, our school climate specialist. And we reach out to those families as best as we can each and every week. We also continue to work with our Center for School Change and meet with um, those individuals, Mr. Henry and Mr. Lemons on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. So that work continues to um, be a priority for us. We also, um, this week, Dr. Epperson and myself, along with Kathleen Ferrucci and Mr. Balsamo from Wallace Middle School, we interviewed over 200 candidates for the Academic Academy. And um, those students will be selected and that Um, communication will also go out to those teachers. Um, Dr. Everson can speak more about the work at the middle and high school levels as far as graduation, et cetera. Dr. Everson, if you want to go ahead. Yes. Um, Good evening and thank you, Dr. Ruffin and um, the commissioners, uh, the president and vice president. Um, We also want to commend um, Mr. Schwartz and his, the CAO and his department for everything that they have done to make sure that Google Classroom is up and running, the professional development from our deputy superintendent, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, when we went into this, I am so glad that we took our time and we went into it so we can make sure that it was done right the first time and we want going back, backtrack and the teachers embraced it and it's going really well. I know that because the principals have been invited into the classrooms and we have been invited into the classrooms just to see how um, things are going. So we're very pleased with that. Also um, from the secondary perspective, we've also 
uh, been sitting in on some of the uh, leadership team meetings and some of the IDT meetings that the principals uh, have invited us to be a part of. Uh, we're continuously monitoring the engagement uh, level of the students. The teachers are doing that and the principals are monitoring that. And again, like Maureen said, they're turning that information to us. We're meeting with our principals, not just on a need to basis, um, but when they need us, we're meeting with them also. We're, um, and we're talking to the middle schools about their schedules and the high schools about schedules, trying to make sure we have the courses worked out and everything smooth, uh, flows a little smoother than it did last year when we moved out of this year and transition into another year. We've just been talking about um, the importance of making sure that kids are, uh, that all of our students are getting um, the extra attention that they need if they were struggling before March the 12th. Um, and then in the process of all that, we've just been um, assisting um, Mr. Clark and his department with making sure that all processes and procedures are following the guidelines of the CDC when um, people are entering into the building. And then we've worked on the um, early college high school um, interviews with uh, Dr. Rodriguez and um, Post University. And again, that was a very, that was a success. And then the, after all of that, sometimes we, we every once in a while get an opportunity to sit in on some of the Bridge to Success webinars uh, that they offer to the community for free. So we're um, and just trying to make sure that uh, we're available and accessible and we're doing the work just like our principals are doing the work. That's it. Thank you. Um, thank you to my staff and I will conclude and then hopefully we'll have some, some uh, questions and we can respond to you uh, with our committee. Uh, the mayor uh, has his long-term recovery committee um, uh, from the municipal side and the school board has our long-term co uh, recovery committee. Um, we have met, uh, our committee has met twice. Uh, the second time that we met, we met alongside the mayor's committee uh, so that we could um, learn from each other and support each other as we uh, make plans for reopening. Uh, we are going to be very much uh, a team in working collectively <coughs> because there are many uh, staff members and many committee members on the mayor's committee that will be so um, important to our moving forward or before we even know what next steps we're going to move forward in terms of safety and um, and and transportation efforts. Uh, and, and I'm not talking just transportation from the bus area. I'm talking about just maneuvering and being able to manage a complex uh, reopening whenever that reopening actually occurs. So from the Board of Education Long-Term Recovery Committee, uh, the members of the team that, that are present in this board meeting tonight are all members. Uh, on a short-term basis, we're looking at what we can uh, reasonably do for summer camps as well as summer school based on the uh, uh, governor's last executive order, it appears, and, and the commissioner's orders, it appears that summer school would be something that we shouldn't consider until at least July 6th. At summer camp, that might be something that we consider a little bit sooner. Uh, we also look at the long-term plan for how we distribute computers uh, for the distance learning that we believe will be ongoing. And we're looking at what, not just what the guidance is stating, because there are various committees <coughs> working on reopening cities, reopening the state, reopening school districts. What these various committees are doing is they're providing some kind of guidance, they're providing some suggestions, they're providing ideas, but they're not going to tell Waterbury what Waterbury needs to do or any of the other school districts. School districts need to own what that's going to look like for them. And that's what this committee, the uh, our committee, will be looking at from the suggestions that are presented to the ones that we learn on our own what would be best for Waterbury moving forward. So it's a monumental task that will not be uh, quick to, uh, to make recommendations on. And we want to take our time and we want to be very thorough and, in, and be inclusive. Uh, because we want to be inclusive, the committee will also, our committee will, will expand to three subcommittees. 
we will have one uh, which currently meets for the technology committee. And I believe I've sent members of that committee to the board members. We'll also have teaching and learning committee, which again, will have various other members of our, our community, not only school administrators. And then the proposed health and safety committee members, again, that will expand from not only our committee within our school system, but also other members of the city who also provide additional guidance to us, uh, such as Stay Well and Wellmore and the health department and parks department and um, the police department and the PAL representation and the fire and, and the has, hazmat rep. So we're expecting that this work, while it's going to be very intense, uh, it's going to be inclusive of parents and students as well, because we want to include student voice in our committees, as well as parents. We've had a number uh, of uh, parent liaisons volunteer. And, and so while everybody cannot sit on every single committee, we do expect that our committees will be inclusive. And, uh, and then we're going to have many iterations of a proposed plan before we ever get to a plan that we want to present to the board for approval. Uh, I'm going to stop there. That's a lot of information. And, and believe me, it's only a portion of what uh, this team has been doing uh, every single day, but they work extremely hard. I'm proud of the principals for doing for the parents and for the students for their willingness to travel along with us during this, this, this time. I'm very pleased with our food um, and nutrition staff, um, for our maintainers, for everyone who's out in the front lines every day or sometimes a couple of days a week, almost someone is constantly working on assuring that we have a strong team on the ground. And when teams have, members have been ill, because that has happened, uh, other team members have stepped forward to, to continue that work, whether it's preparing meals for the students, issuing packets, uh, being there to respond to an issue that's only going to be able to receive a response at the school level from our various office staff members who are taking calls remotely, who are responding to emails. Um, I cannot thank everyone enough because in this situation that we're in, I, you know, people have really risen to being um, true heroes in, pro in providing what's best for children. Uh, not always the popular decisions that you know have to make, but always with the best interests of the people involved. And uh, with that, I will conclude this presentation and we are ready for any questions that you might have. Any questions, anyone? I have a question. Okay. Commissioner Serrano Adorno. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, you guys pretty much answered a lot of the questions. That was a lot of information. So as I was writing questions, you guys were answering them. So I appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, Dr. Rodriguez, I know you mentioned as far as the Google Meets or the Google Classroom, you are also going to include PE. And that was actually one of my questions. Um, I did attend a virtual Zoom event uh, from Bridge to Success on May 13th, Mind Over Matter. And they actually had uh, Fitness Fury do a little um, fitness demonstration. And I thought that is very important to try to keep the, the mind and body active and engage our, our students and, and families. Uh, physically, you know, I myself, I've been maintaining to do, um, you guys already know I do Zumba. So I've been doing that live and just kind of keep that energy going. So not just the academics, but I think um, the physical activity part. So I love that idea that you definitely can have um, maybe gym teachers or someone to help with deep breathing and how to um, release some stress. So that was definitely something um, that, that I do appreciate you guys are going to do moving forward. Um, my other question, that was a comment, but um, Dr. Ruffin, um, as far as the distance learning, how how is the special ed students, um, is there a plan in place? I know it's hard because they're individualized, um, and I know it's probably per each um, IEP, but is there something moving forward or a plan to, to help those students? 
Absolutely, Commissioner, and thanks for asking the question. There's some ongoing teaching and learning going on for our special needs students. Uh, and it is definitely individualized um, and specialized. And, um, and, and that is ongoing. Um, there are still some challenges uh, depending on the, um, you know, the IEP, but we are definitely connecting with our special needs students and some of the specialized assistance is also being provided as well. Awesome, but thank you. Kudos and applause to all of you guys. You're doing amazing work, thank you. Commissioner Jason Van Stone, I think you're next. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, everyone, thank you for um, uh, a very thorough presentation. I think it touched on a lot of things, so I appreciate all the work you guys put in there. Um, and even though it was encompassing, it was a bit of an executive summary kind of highlights of, of um, certain things going on. I was wondering if we'd be able to get some of the documents you guys were referencing, um, you know, just sent out in an email so we can get kind of the full scope. Everything we heard today was terrific. Um, but if we could have some of those, you know, origin documents where we could take a look um, to see things are going at a little more granular, that would also be appreciated. Absolutely, Commissioner. We'll compile it in 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 like a one big document with subheadings so that you could get it. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. President. Commissioner Tom Vanson, you're next. Thank you, Mr. President. Through you, uh, Dr. Ruffin, over the last few years, Daryl Swartz and his team has brought a lot of new curriculum to the board. Uh, most of it, if not all of it, was very media driven, resources, etc. So, what is that? Done. Has that complemented our distance learning to this point? It absolutely has. And I'm going to let Mr. Schwartz speak more to that. But I mean, it was almost like it was right in time because the uh, the, the materials that the um, Mr. Schwartz and his team brought to the board and that the board and the curriculum committee approved uh, all have digital resources. And now it's thrown us into a world where, gosh, how timely is that? But Mr. Schwartz can elaborate. I think that was my other brother, Daryl, that, that, that did that. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, Commissioner Van Stone, uh, good point. I think that, you know, as you sit there and, and, and chair the curriculum committee, you know that many of the things that we bring to you have a media component to it. And we've had a, a keen eye and have given rubric weight to uh, those programs and curriculums that provide that online resource for students. Um, and, and, and now more than ever, uh, man, are we, we lucky that, or we are lucky that we've had, um, I, I think an interim superintendent, Mr. Henry, uh, who helped get the ball rolling with some of the, the, the curriculum purchases and Dr. Ruffin, who really came in and, and, and <laughs> saw a big need there, um, and supported, uh, the academic office in, in, in reallocating current funding, uh, not new money, but current funding that, that to reallocate it towards what, uh, what, what's important for students, which is, is curriculum and, and, and uh, online components to that. And so um, we've had to adjust a little bit, obviously, uh, in this new environment, and, and we continue to do so. Um, but we are, uh, uh, Dr. Ruffin hit it on the head, it's, it's, it's right in time for a lot of our departments to have uh, such robust uh, online programming. And, and so I, I want to thank the board for passing those curriculums and, and um, I think that's what's made those numbers that you saw earlier. It was a, it was a lot, many ways, a smooth transition uh, over for, for some of our students with those programs. Thank you, Mr. President. Just one last comment. I, that, that video you showed us taking a peek in the classroom, that was fantastic. That, that made my day. So thanks. Okay, any other questions? Karen, um, uh, Vice President Harvey. You're muted. Karen, we can't hear you. You're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. All right, first, thank you very much um, for those presentations. A lot of, lot of information, so you may receive questions um, afterwards, but uh, what stands out for me, Will, I'm gonna ask you, direct this question to you. Um, when you talk about the computers, uh, how many computers do we need at this present time so that all students have computers? 
Well, the, uh, look at the numbers uh, that we presented. Um, if you just talk, if you take out the students who uh, essentially have computers and, and are able to uh, handle the uh, the connectivity themselves, um, it's essentially you need another ten ten thousand um, because if you look at us, around eight thousand are out in the field. Um, we have another uh, thousand fifteen hundred um, uh, that we have in stock. So, you know, that gets you, um, around nine, 10,000. Um, and you think about our, our student population of 19,000, but again, you have to remember that there could be some elements of bring your own device and so forth. Uh, we are getting that state uh, infusion of laptops for, uh, yeah. over 4,000. So that number starts to, um, come down uh, a little bit. But if you think about um, the, just the core need, if you don't assume any um, bring your own device or, or folks utilizing their own, um, uh, that's essentially the number. We're around um, nine to 10,000 um, in hand right now. Um, if you add in that state component that's coming in for the high schools, um, gets us about to 14,000. Um, so somewhere in between that um, five and, and 10,000. Um, okay. is is where the need is. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I'm asking this question, uh, Will, is because um, I've been asked this question uh, by community leaders who want to assist us with uh, providing these computers to our students. Um, so I think we need to, I know we, you said, you mentioned that you're waiting for the state, you're waiting for other uh, funds for other areas and computers from other areas where you have community people that are willing to uh, contribute to this cause. So that's why I'm asking uh, what, you know, do we have a handle on what uh, the figures are? So I'm just going to leave that with you. If, if we if we can work out, you know, I'm not sure around the legalities and all this other stuff, but we have community organizations and community leaders that want to contribute to this cause because they want uh, the students to have computers. So I'll uh, leave that with you and, and pursue that with you later. I'm going to, oh, okay. So next, and I have two more questions. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, I thank you so much for those stats. I've been asking, um, how are we measuring um, engagement? Um, how many logins, um, et cetera. So um, Jason, I think you asked the question and if we can keep that data coming, um, maybe on a monthly basis or weekly basis, whatever the case may be, because that's important data to have in order to, to um, measure engagement. So I thank you so much for providing that information. Now, um, in the paper, I believe it was on Monday, I'm looking at my, countertop here. Um, it talked about uh, figures that were released in regards to uh, our, our grammar school, um, high school, and middle school in regards to those that I believe have been contacted. 91.3% uh, for elementary students. 74.8% um, for middle school uh, students, middle grade students, and 66.2. So here's my question. Um, we say that we make the effort, and I believe that we are um, doing that. Um, and this, Dr. Ruffin, this is going, uh, this question is directed to you. How, or anyone actually, how, what are we doing after we reach out, we receive no response, what is the next step for engagement, or, or what is the next step to reach these these families? We're utilizing all of our staff that are there for the very purpose of supporting families, finding families, reaching out, trying to make some last minute, uh, last minute you know, connections. We're reaching out to the current students that might know where the students are and obtaining information and documenting that. Uh, we're also utilizing some of the assistance from some of the community members that are assisting us by reaching out if perhaps there is a language barrier. 
Um, we're also um, meeting and have received the support of our SROs who are not going to mm -hmm. help us because they want to arrest students or anything, but they're doing that because they have a relationship with students and might be able to help us. Well, we've had conversations and, and, and meetings with those that may be able to indicate to us whether the students are in some kind of trouble or in distress. Uh, we're also looking to see if, and examining some of um, the, the homeless stats that we have and really identifying students uh, by name to help other people assist us with doing that. We have staff that's available for that specific purpose. Um, and additionally, yeah, after we've exhausted all of our resources and we can no longer find anyone and we've exhausted all of our resources, at this time there's nothing else that we'll be able to do. Okay, so right now, have we made a dent uh, with the, the figures um, or are we pretty much, you know, the figures, have they stayed the same or have you made any improvement? No, there's improvements that are being made almost on a daily basis and that, that will not be updated and provided for public consumption every single day, but we're making some progress. Schools are celebrating when they've made even find one uh, and, and, and mm -hmm. keeping in mind that even when the student is located, uh, there are many, many scenarios that we know of mm -hmm. where they may not have the... They may, it may not be in their best interest to connect electronically if mm -hmm. there's a situation of trauma. And right. we are very sensitive to that on every level. Okay, all right, thank you. And you, you brought up trauma, urban trauma. And I hope that uh, we have a way of, um, I, you know, I remember sending an email uh, because I listened to a webinar on urban trauma. So I hope that um, we have some plans you know, uh, professional development. We may have done it before, but I think we need to do it again on urban trauma um, because we hopefully, when we begin to, um, you know, rev up for the fall, if that's the date or if that's the time, uh, we will need to to deal with that issue. So I thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Uh, Liz Brown, did I see your hand up? Just, I just had a quick question in terms of, uh, I, I didn't hear any mention about uh, PPE, you know, uh, what we're envisioning that the schools might need, or is that just still in the planning stages? That's part of what we're going to include as we consider some of our options uh, and what are some of the options for what school might look like whenever schools do open up again. Because I know just- and Including summer schools. Uh, if I may, President, uh, one one thing that I know CABE is working on uh, encouraging the state to do some bulk purchasing and kind of look at it holistically instead of every school, uh, you know, vying for these supplies themselves, maybe in economy of scale. So that's one thing that they are looking at. I don't know if it's going to happen, but um, I don't know if you've heard anything. But uh, we're we're here. We hear so much. I know, yeah. And we receive so much until if you just kind of just stop for a little while, you're going to receive something else. And so um, Mr. Clark and, and his team and operations are very much aware of, of those kinds of things, as well as the emergency command station that is here in Waterbury, as well as the mayor's committee that we meet with every week. We are, we are very much aware that that is something that is on that list of, so what are we going to do when? Okay, thank yes. you. Yeah, we are. Um, Great job, everyone. The presentations were awesome. Great job. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Rocco or so. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much for your presentations and commend you on all your hard work. Uh, Dr. Ruffin, one quick question. You're talking about the graduations and the virtual graduations. Um, are they going to be like a, a Zoom type of thing? I mean, we, we as commissioners, can we, you know, be present at, the, I mean, zoom in on these uh, graduation ceremonies? Absolutely. Um, the, the, after, they, after they are done in rough draft, the principals will have an opportunity to review them for any kind of editing. And then uh, once they're ready to be posted, 
um, you know, an announcement will go out to family, community, and everyone, and then they will be uh, posted um, so that everybody could like congregate in one area, you know, families can do that. And then we will have three graduations per, per day. So the uh, three graduations on the 16th and then three graduations on the 17th. And yes, we can all sit and watch them in the safety and security of wherever we chose to meet. Thank you. And, and then they're going to be preserved uh, for, for reviewing many more times after that. So kind of like a YouTube posting or something like that after we get a chance to see them uh, on the night of their graduation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ruffin and team. That was wonderful. Um, I'll move on to the next agenda item, which happens to be me. I know you have one more person that wants to speak. The oh, student, one more who? The student rep. Oh, the student rep. Shira, do you have any comments? Yes, um, to Dr. Ruffin, about graduation, um, I was speaking to a lot of my classmates regarding graduation because a lot of them are saying, like, the virtual graduation, a lot of us don't want the virtual graduation because we feel like it wasn't, we don't get the sense of like a real graduation and we don't have like any caps and gowns. So I feel like a lot of them wanted caps and gowns and that those type of things. And some of the suggestions that I saw in the group chats were like drive through graduations because we see like other states doing them or like, I think um, there was one with a field um, and they had all the students separated and from six feet apart. So they weren't close to each other on a field. I don't know how that would actually be possible for us, but um, even if like after the virtual graduation, like we had like a different type of cer graduation ceremony for our class of 2020, I don't know how that would work for us. But I know that was some of the suggestions that came up. Yes. And, and I want to thank you for, for bringing that up. And I will be more than happy to respond to why we're going to have the virtual graduation and why I did not make the decision to recommend that we would have a drive-by graduation or something, um, uh, or, or something else that might occur at an undetermined date. First of all, I wanted to assure that even though it was not what anyone thought that they would be experiencing in the class of 2020, that the class of 2020 had a celebration. I wanted to assure that the high school principals wanted to assure that, and even on a select basis of students that did join the conversation as the uh, invitations were sent out by their principals, even at that time, uh, we considered several options. You know, can we have graduation in July or in August, or can we have uh, an, a different kind of graduation? You know, we don't want a graduation virtually. Or we don't want a graduation that's going to take away from us walking on stage with our cap and gown. And I, I get it. I totally get that. But we had to make a decision. I did it very quickly, not to hurry and make a decision, but to assure that my senior class of 2020 was going to get something. So let me give you a scenario. If we do not have a virtual graduation, first of all, virtual graduations are not created in a week. So a decision had to be made in a timely manner to at least allow us to push forward with, this is a graduation ceremony that we can guarantee to our class of 2020. That's what we did. A virtual graduation, I think the links went out. Uh, I know different schools had different uh, 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 preparations for their class because school did end uh, on March 12th. And so some had more pictures than others. We have an opportunity for students to upload a, a photo and to be able to create uh, a, a graduation that we can guarantee can happen in June, knowing that the last day of school is June 17th. So going a little bit ahead, there, there are some school districts that may very well have some drive-by graduations. And, and while I cannot speak for all of the different uh, municipalities who decide to make that decision, 
what we all knew in Connecticut was we received guidance that we were not to have gatherings of more than five people in any one place. And that did not change with this last executive order. And it might change on June 20th to expand for phase two or phase three of the governor's plan to open the city. It might very well do that. It could, however, go back the other way and say, because we opened up at the time that we did, we're going to have to shut down some areas and we're going to go back into more of a quarantine. That could happen. Uh, I, I don't know that it will, but I did not want our senior class of 2020 to be jeopardized because things could change in a matter of 14 days. And, and I wanted a guarantee that the class would have a graduation. Uh, there is not a, a, a feasible way with the number of high schools that we have in Waterbury to guarantee the safety of our students and our staff and everyone else if we do a drive-by graduation. Some districts that have one high school might be in a different position than we are. We don't have one high school. Uh, and, and so, and, I, and I'm very pleased that we have the number of high schools and the number of students that we have, but I couldn't gamble on that and, and, and deny the senior class an opportunity to at least graduate. I know that you're, it's not a popular decision, and I know that you're not very pleased with the fact that we're going to have a virtual graduation. But had I not had graduation on June 16th and 17th in a virtual format, and we were trying to schedule graduation in July under the assumption that the order was going to be lifted, I want you to know that that was not the way the governor planned on releasing the next phase of his plan. It's currently no more than five for large gatherings. The next phase could presumably, could presumably expand it to no more than 10 or 50 maybe. That's still smaller than any of our graduating classes in Waterbury. So given all of that, we could either have a virtual graduation, which is guaranteed, or we could have a graduation that could be moved potentially, but it may not occur at all. And, 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 and so as superintendent and faced with those options, this was the best option to guarantee that the class of 2020 was going to get celebrated. Okay, thank you. I just wanted a clear explanation just so I can go back to the class and be like, this is the reason for why we're having a virtual graduation. So I appreciate you explaining that to me. Thank you. And if you want me to jump on a call with all of you one more time so you can just tell me how unhappy you are, if that makes you happy. I'll <laughs> you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It's now the president's corner. I have a couple of comments. You know, I actually look at these times as similar to sailing a boat. I used to sail a lot when I was younger. Sometimes you have to jibe and sometimes you have to tack. That's steering the boat according to the winds where you land lovers. But everything else, you have to keep your eye on the mark, the target that you're trying to go towards. My personal feelings about the department during this chaotic storm is positive. I realize that some probably disagree with me and that's okay. But as I learned in my previous job, where I had a little more than 1,500 individuals, I learned the fine art of appreciative inquiry. That's celebrating the things that we were good at, because heaven knows we did a lot more screw-ups during the day than most people saw at home on their TV screen. There was enough negative energy with this pandemic, so I jive and tag my personal sailboat toward positive energy marks. Dr. Ruffin and team, you guys are doing a fantastic effort on keeping this chaos at bay. No one has had the experiential education that all of you have been through for these past two months. To each and every teacher in our district and principal and vice principal, I compliment you for your stellar performance. It is not a perfect world and I totally get it. That's the engineer in me. There will be mistakes, there will be screw ups, there will be stressors that make your day even more stressful. But at the end of the day, the teaching and delivery of the care and love that you have all for our students is being received and acknowledged. I applaud each and every one of you. Thanks for your service and thank you for your professionalism. The end of the president's comments. Um, student comments. Shira, do you have any other comments? No, I'm good now. Okie dokie. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.
Uh, our next item is going to be the consent calendar. Does anyone have an item to be removed, to be removed from this consent calendar? No. Having seen none, I will continue and I'll read, I'll proceed with the reading of the consent calendar. Item 10.1. The Committee on Finance the request an approval of a professional services agreement with Stanley Convergent Security Solutions, Inc. to provide monitoring and servicing of school security systems. Item 10.2, Committee on Finance the request an approval of a professional services agreement with Facility Support Services, LLC, to provide an on-call environmental services and a H E R A inspections. Item 10.3, Committee on Building and School Facilities. Request approval of educational specifications for the proposed Generali School Roof Project. I would like to have a motion to approve the consent calendar, items 10.1 through 10.3 as listed. I call on Commissioner Melissa Serrano Adorno. Motion to approve the consent calendar 10.1 through 10.3 as read. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I didn't even go through discussion. Anybody have a, a discussion point they want to make before we uh, go on? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. Committee of the Whole. I'm looking for a motion to approve that request of Mayor Neil M. O'Leary to name Mr. President. If I oh. may. Hold on. Let me just already. read it. Let me just read it and then I'll let you do the motion, okay? Okay. I'm looking for a motion to approve that the request of Mayor Neil M. O'Leary to name the Crosby School Gymnasium in honor of Nicholas Nick Ajelli be approved. Vice President Harvey, would you like to say a couple of words? And if you want to push a motion, so be it also. All right, I'm gonna read uh, the Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee of the Whole recommends the request of Mayor Neil M. O'Leary to name the Crosby High School Gymnasium in honor of Nicholas Imperens Nick Jelly be approved. Respectfully submitted and so moved. Second. May I have a second? Second. May I have a, do we want a roll call or do we want to do an all call? Do we need a discussion? I don't know. Do we need a discussion? Yes. Okay. The floor is yours, Vice President Harvey. All right. Thank you. Um, I just, first of all, I want, want to say that uh, this is a, indeed an honor um, as a Crosbyite. Um, and as a Crosby Bulldog uh, to make that motion. And um, the honor, you know, as a, as a, as a Crosby, it is an honor to have Nick uh, have his gym um, named after, the gym named after him. So I wholeheartedly support this. Uh, I congratulate for all his accomplishments and it makes us proud those of us who not only in the city but those of us who uh, graduated from uh, Crosby High School and attend Crosby High School so thank you any other uh just like Commissioner Rocco Orso you're muted can you hear me now you're good I just again want to congratulate Nick and it's a great honor and it'd be an honor and a privilege for me to vote yes for this tonight. And uh, he, it's well-deserved, it's well-deserved. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for all your good work. Any other discussion points? Hearing none, I'd like to take uh, a vote now. We have a second, correct? Yes. Yes. All in favor of this approval? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Ajelli. Yay. Yay, Nick. Yay, Nick. 
Our next agenda item is item number 13, Committee on Policy and Legislation. I'm looking for a motion to approve the addition of the following paragraph to policy 6146.1, high school grading slash QPR, policy 6146.11, elementary school uniform grading, and policy 6146.111, middle school uniform grading. In the event that schools are unexpectedly closed under a municipal, state, or federal mandate for more than 10 or more consecutive school days, the superintendent will provide equitable grading procedures in the best interest of all students that account for such as closure and communicate the changes in procedures. In the event of such a closure, the superintendent's grading procedures will be will supersede the following formulas and grading policies. These procedures will remain in effect by decision of the superintendent until such time the superintendent deems appropriate. Commissioner Sweeney, may I have a a motion from you, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. Discussion. Mr. President, I make a motion to amend the uh, motion. Second. Discussion. Uh, I, I need would... a motion for before you... there's a second. I thought there was a motion. I no, made no, a on motion. the amendment. Oh, was there a second? Second. Thank uh, you. I got a new carry. Yeah, no, no. She seconded it after Jason said I wanted to amend. Never okay. mind. Yeah, she seconded the amend the amendment of the motion. I thought. Okay. Discussion on this amendment. If I could, Mr. President, I would like to change the language slightly, Good. similar to as I, I had mentioned in our roll call. Uh, so my changes would be my changes would be in the first and the last sentence, and I, I'll read it slowly um, so we it, it's not too confusing. In the event that the schools are unexpectedly closed under a municipal, state, or federal mandate for 10 or more consecutive days, I would add new language, and with the approval of the Board of Education, good, good. The superintendent will provide equitable yep. grading procedures in the face the render of the sentence would say the same. In the last sentence, I would like it to be. These procedures will remain in effect by a decision of the superintendent and the board of education until a time deemed appropriate. Very good. Any further discussion? Give me a second. Is there a second to this? Second. No, she just needed a second to write it down, I think. All right, okay. Could she repeat it, Matt, Mr. President? Could she, can Carrie repeat that once we get everything straight? what the amendment is well, well we're ready for the vote we can repeat that back okay wherever just so long as we repeat it thank you mr president are there any other comments on this issue commissioner sweeney do you have any comments yeah um, the language at the beginning, um, again, the intent in the discussion at the committee level, at least on from a majority of the committee members, was to um, give the superintendent the leeway to make the decisions in the emergency situations. I have no problem with the approval at the bottom of the, um, the, the I'm sorry, the language change at, at the the end of the sentences, um, I would say that the superintendent and the board deems appropriate. It would be um, clear language for me, um, but I would not. I, I would not be comfortable with um, changing the first section. Any other comments? Can you just read them over again, if you don't mind? Yeah. So, agreed. Do you want me to read or Jason? All right, anyway, I don't care who's Okay. 
On the first sentence, in the event that the schools are unexpectedly closed under a municipal, state, or federal mandate for 10 or more consecutive school days, the superintendent, I'm sorry. And with the approval. And with the approval of the Board of Education, the superintendent will provide dot, 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 dot. Then we go to the last sentence. These procedures yeah. will remain in effect by decision of the superintendent and the Board of Education until such time the superintendent deems appropriate. Mm -hmm. That's just until a time deemed appropriate, since we're both making it. Until a time? Why don't we take a vote to see if this motion goes any further and then we can come back? Can I make a comment, President Pagano? Uh, sure. Thank you, through you. Um, my only concern with adding that statement is that, God forbid, something happened like this to try to get all of us together to approve something that the superintendent could make the decision herself. That would be my concern that what if we're all not available and she needs to just make a, a, a decision. Let's say something happened at three o'clock in the morning, you know, and she needs to make a decision herself that she should be able to um, to do that. So I'm not sure, like I can see where Ann is coming from. Um, and I agree that maybe it should come somewhere in the end. Like I get what Jason is saying, but I think in case of an emergency, that is her duty as a superintendent to make the that sudden decision. And if, you know, something like this that happened was um, so unexpected. So um, I get where the board should be notified, but I think overall it's up to the superintendent to make the best decision for our district. Okay, let's take a, a roll call vote on this amendment going forward. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Harvey? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Sorno? I think that was a no. She's muted. I'm reading her lips. No? Yeah. No. Commissioner Stango? Charles, you're muted. You're still muted. Okay, I think that's a no. A I no? think that's a no also. Okay. Commissioner Sweeney? No. Commissioner Jason Van Stone? Yes. Commissioner Tom Van Stone? Yes. President Pagano? No. 5-4, motion to amend. The amendment passes. Good. Okay. Then what is the next order of business now? We have to vote on the underlying amended motion to approve. Yes. Okay. Um, Charles, is your hand up? Yeah, yes, my hand's up. I'd like to make a uh, further friendly amendment to that motion. Second. <clears throat> what? I'd, like, I'd like to make a motion to amend the current motion that deletes the words, the following, and the second sentence of that um, motion. In other words, right now, <clears throat> it reads, in, in, um, in light, in the event of such a closure, the superintendent's grading procedure will supersede the following formulas and grading policies. I'd like to remove the following from that sentence. I make a motion, a friendly motion, to amend that. Second. We take a vote on that now? Any discussion on that? Yeah, any discussion? Okay, the discussion would be, I, I think that the uh, removing the words will make it, and putting them on the end of that uh, paragraph, like we talked about in committee, would make it for a clearer uh, understanding of the meaning of the motion. I Any would, other comments? Mr. President, I would tend to agree with Charles. I thought we already did this, honestly, and I missed that um, my earlier motion. Uh, the, the, the language, quote unquote, the following was when we were leading off with this paragraph. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my understanding that this paragraph will actually be at the tail end, so there's really nothing following this language. So deleting the words, the following, makes sense. Okay, any other 
discussion points? Commissioner Sweeney? Yeah, just, just briefly, um, we needed to bring the, the um, language forward that was approved by the committee. Uh, this little piece did not appear until after the committee had taken a vote. So the proper procedure was to bring it forward that way an amendment. I think Commissioner Stango for his amendment. Okay, any Thank other discussions? All right, I guess, do we take a vote now on this amended amendment? Yep. The vote would be on Charles's amendment. Right. And uh, do we want to do a roll call, please? Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Harvey? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Yes. Commissioner Stango? Yes. Commissioner Sweeney? Yes. Commissioner Jason Van Stone? Yes. Commissioner Tom Van Stone? Yes. President Pagano? Yes. Motion carries. So what do we got to vote on next? The motion as amended. Amended motion. Okay. Basically, you're back on agenda. Okay. Um, May I have a motion to do whatever Gary just said to me? Motion to approve 13.1 as amended. Second. Discussion. Let's do a roll call vote. No one's got their hand up. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Vice President Harvey? Yes. Commissioner Orso? Yes. Commissioner Serrano Adorno? Yes. Commissioner Stango? Yes. Commissioner Sweeney? Yes. Commissioner Jason Van Stone? Yes. Commissioner Tom Van Stone? Yes. President Pagano? Yes. Motion uh, carries 9 0. Excellent. Are we done with item 13? <laughs> nice job, Mr. President. Yeah, whatever I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> we're done with 13, correct? Yes, we no. are. Thank you. That was as clear as mud. Uh, <laughs> item 14, superintendent's notification to the board. May I have a motion to receive and place on file the superintendent's notification to the board of items 14.1 through 14.3 as listed. Commissioner Sweeney, would you do the honors? So moved. May I second. have a second? Is there any discussion? Second. May I have a second? Thank you, Vice President Harvey. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Our final order of business is like, no, we still have item 15, unfinished business or preceding meeting only. Any Anybody have anything? Seeing nobody waving their hands, I'll take that as a no. Any other unfinished new or miscellaneous business? Uh, Vice President Harvey. Thank you. Uh, quickly, um, this, it might be old business, but I think it's, it's a new, uh, we're going to look at it uh, as a new item. Um, Mr. President, I am, we made a decision, you made a decision uh, a few weeks ago on, we were talking about uh, the issue of commissioners uh, attending committee meetings. And there was a discussion or concern about non-committee me members being able to attend the meeting. So uh, you ruled that because of the uh, quorum issue that uh, the non-member would have to uh, attend, would, would attend as a community, part of the community. So the request here, and I'm not sure if this needs to go through policy or not, or if it's just a common courtesy, um, and that is that we allow the commissioner, as you uh, recommended, to be part, to attend as part of the community. Um, and that if they had any comments, they can make it as a community, as a part of the community, not as a commissioner. 
the request is that we allow public speaking, if the public who is attending the meeting wishes to speak, that we allow that to happen. So that's that's the request. Um, so you can rule on that or not, but I think in the in in regards to transparency and uh, particularly with all the changes that we are uh, taking in the education department, we want to have transparency and uh, let the public know that we encourage them to come and visit and to speak uh, with us, attend our subcommittee meetings. Uh, I'm making uh, that recommendation that we just allow a period of time in our subcommittee meetings for the public to speak. I want to give, uh, lastly, congratulate Mr. Foote uh, for being uh, the teacher of the year. Uh, Mr. Foote is just a phenomenal, phenomenal teacher. He came into the district on point. And um, I have heard um, from our community leaders that they're very pleased, particularly those that attended Walsh School, they're very pleased that he has been recommended. So um, I wanna personally uh, congratulate him on his achievement. And that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Melissa Serrano Adorno. Thank you, President. Um, I had a few notes that I wanted to, to express. I know I've already said some already, but um, first and foremost, I do wanna express my appreciation to Superintendent Ruffin um, and to her entire staff, but for always maintaining a transparent and consecutive updates and communication since school had to close abruptly in March. Um, we all had concerns and questions and you worked relentlessly in answering them yourself along with you know, your, your entire team um, and you continue to do that. So um, we might not be there to see all of the behind the scenes that occur uh, to try to get our district where it needs to be, but based on all your updates and based on today's wonderful presentation of your entire um, staff, I can personally see that you have completed an extensive amount of work um, and continue to do so relentlessly. Um, you don't hesitate to reply to my text, doesn't matter how late, you, you still reply, you're a late owl like myself or our emails. And again, so I just wanna thank you and everybody behind the scenes um, that are working tirelessly to get our families and students the help that they need to continue their education. Um, as we heard from other concerns about why is it taking our district so long to get the virtual distance learning up and running? Um, I agree with Dr. Epperson when she mentioned it's better to get it right the first time than to go back. You know, we are going to make mistakes, but you know, I, I do want to say that not, not all districts are, are the same. There are other districts that obviously have advantages compared to our urban districts, such as Waterbury, and they have more resources. Um, I believe I read an article that uh, Commissioner Brown may have shared with us. It could have been from CAVE. Um, and please, Liz, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I believe it was the Glastonbury School that um, most of their students had iPads and they were already up and running by the second week that school was closed. Uh, but as I mentioned, they had an advantage because they were already use, utilizing the iPads uh, for the higher grade students in some type of virtual learning. Um, so they got that advantage over us. We're lucky enough to get those generous donations to provide our students with the Chromebook. Um, and again, not all districts have the same advantages as other districts. So I definitely understand parents' concerns as to why it was taking baby steps. It's, it's slow steps. So we always try to ensure that the equity and education that all students have access to appropriate technology and connectivity. We've discussed that today. Um, and again, and I do appreciate the daily updates on Twitter as well as the other social media that I have seen. Um, I people on the phone, but I would definitely like to recommend to try to utilize um, Instagram as another social media platform um, to use as, as another source of communication. Um, and, and even Dr. Ruffin, um, as you mentioned, there are families that we still haven't been able to get in contact with. Maybe as a suggestion I, I thought about is that maybe we could try to track them through social media since uh, most families and our students are communicating and prominently using that probably on a daily basis. Um, but I do wanna continue to celebrate the students, their, the families and the staff, um, especially 
during this pandemic. I've seen pictures and accomplishments being shared, and that would be something positive to see in everyone's to see everyone's hard work, or to just simply spread cheer so that we can post those accomplish accomplishments on our district webpage or other social media platforms. But and another more important note, I, I have reached um, or seen a lot of parents' um, concerns and comments. So I want to send out um, this message in particular to the guardians. Um, I'm sorry that I'm taking too long, Mr. President, um, but I did my my research really thoroughly. I, I can't sleep, so this is at three o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm doing this. Uh, <laughs> Um, I did remember that the CAVE Executive Director, Mr. Rader, mentioned that we understand support for families is desperately needed. It is not only an educational issue. Parents need help understanding how software work, even if the context is difficult for them. We must remember that not all parents speak English, so we must prepare communication plans in the language they speak, which I can say I've seen many communications going out in other language from our superintendent Ruffin. So again, thank you for that. Um, for myself growing up, my parents only spoke Spanish. Um, I wasn't allowed to speak English at home. So if this was me back then, I would have a difficult time that my parents wouldn't be able to help me unless it came in their language. Um, but as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact our way of life, we do recognize that schools and families are engaged in daily challenges to support ourselves and our students. As the number of the cases increase, so does the level of fear, stress, and anxiety being experienced in our community. So as we shift to remote learning environments, it is also important to not overlook the mental health impacts that this may also be having on our staffs and our families and students. I personally, my son, um, tested positive, and that was a very scary moment. So if I had a child home, uh, which I did, I had a college student in my home at Jacob, um, I wasn't really able to, to help him. Uh, he's pretty much independent anyways, but I can only imagine that there are families that are going through worse. We've had, you know, relatives that have passed from it. So I think we have to also take that into consideration. Um, and also, Karen, to your point that you mentioned the trauma, um, the National School Boards Association Center for Safe Schools in collaboration with the Attachment and Trauma Network has hosted a virtual roundtable discussion on navigating virtual education with calm, connectedness, and compassion. So during these uncertain times with school closures and significant shifts away from normal routines, many people have expressed concerns about the impact on their students' academic journeys. We all agree with that. But I want to encourage the parents and, and educators and the students to remember the bigger picture. This is the time to focus on and be grateful for your family's safety, health, and well-being. Make building strong family relationships a priority as I have. Um, reach out to your neighbors, your friends, and others in your community to check in and offer support. We're all gonna get through this together. Um, each family is experiencing this time differently, especially now that our schools are approaching this Google Meet and Google Classroom. Um, the work commitments that adults are juggling and the unique needs of each child. Uh, I worry about our underserviced population in particular and for our children with challenges and learning differences who rely on school for food, safety, therapeutic care and stability. And I know that our educators are working tirelessly as well to meet the needs of all their students to the best of their ability. I'm almost done, Mr. President. Um, okay. but for those Families, uh, for those families who have been given remote lessons and resources from the schools, try to honor as best as you can what the school is asking your child to do. If the workload feels like too much for your child and your home situation, communicate with your elementary school teachers or the administrators of the school and have your middle and high school students maybe advocate for themselves directly as well and reach out to their um, school teachers or administrators. Uh, if you set up a routine, your child will be learning important academic and social and emotional skills that will prepare them for returning to the classroom and help them thrive in and out of school. So please take a, take a breath, smell the flowers, be gentle on yourself, be patient with your kids and with your partner. Um, have empathy for the teachers and express your gratitude for them and others. Try to embrace and enjoy this family time and please stay healthy. Remember that we always put our students first. 
we're here for you and this too shall pass. So thank you, Mr. President. Those were wonderful words, Melissa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Not bad for three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, as you get older, you'll find out it's a normal hour to be up. Um, any other comments? Uh, Commissioner Ann Sweeney, the floor is yours. You're muted. Okay, apologize for that. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I'll try to make it um, very brief, but um, Dr. Ruffin, I did want to say that I'm quite impressed and amazed um, with all the work you've been doing throughout the pandemic, pandemic uh, your leadership. Uh, I've been going through all the updates that you've been sending up us. The information is always amazing, timely, on point. And just when I think there isn't anything more you can possibly do, you said something else and something you are doing. Uh, something new that you are doing. Um, you have kept us notified all along about the distribution of the laptops. Um, you know, we know knew all through um, how many laptops were being distributed. You sent us little spreadsheets. We knew what, how many were uh, designated for each school, how many were picked up. Um, your outreach uh, to um, try to reach parents um, our website, uh, Facebook, uh, call out from the IRIS system. Uh, just, I, I don't know what more you could have done to reach people and yet you continue. And your staff continues to try to reach out to every single parent, every single child. Um, it's an amazing job by everyone. I applaud you, doctor. I applaud your central office staff, all your principals and vice principals. And I'm amazed at what we saw from our teachers tonight. Our teachers are out there on the front lines, even, uh, you know, distancing. Um, and they're doing a superior job. And I could not, as a citizen of this city, be more grateful for everything that all of you are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sweeney. Applause, applause. Everybody applaud. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Who wants to make Uncle Chuck really happy right now? Make a motion a to to a second, drug. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Most have your sanity check if you do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Have a sparkling weekend. Nice to see you, everybody. And healthy and uh, be well. Thank you. Yeah, happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial. Yes, happy Memorial Day.